we feel very close to these uh, futurist uh, ideas that uh, art shouldn't be something for a museum but should be a life uh, form of uh, expression and uh, uh, possibility to bring all the different art forms together in one big uh, total uh, project. But this, this aspect makes us also quite different, I would think, from uh, the average sort of contemporary music between quotes, uh, quotes uh, organizations. Since, well, from the very first beginning, we thought of we had to take the power on the music situation, on the music culture, instead of let us be dominated by the given institutions and the given forms of production, reproduction, distribution of music. So one of the, and that has to do with the scooters uh, that you uh, mentioned, one of the aspects we've been into is making our own tools to make music. It's very obvious and easier. You go, well, if I want to create a new sound world, you just create new instruments specially made for it. And that was at the very start one of the elements behind it. And that has also sort of ideological, if not political meaning in a certain sense. See, because if you take that music, in order to be interesting, has to contain uh, uh, some variety of expressive possibilities, of choice possibilities for the musician to choose from. Otherwise, it's a very boring message. If you can only play two notes on an instrument, how could the public ever be interested in, in someone expressing himself to pop, 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 okay, for a while. <laughs> you want to make a career that way, that doesn't work. So what's essential is, in music, that you have the disp at your disposal a whole a wide variety of possibilities. Now, instead of going very far in technique on one single instrument, just collect different instruments, different sound objects, different ways of playing on a whole variety of things that are suitable to your, your own expressive needs, which is the, the other way. And you can as well have an equivalent amount of expressive possibilities, which will, and that's the advantage, be much more personalized than in the case of a virtuoso classical player started in 68 uh, as a group of students at the Conservatorium of Ghent and at that time uh, these uh, students made a composition actually Godfrey made a composition for the group and the title of the composition was Logos but at the Conservatorium everything had to be classical romantic music and that composition was a contemporary 20th century composition so the whole group was thrown out out of the Conservatorium because they wanted to make modern music and the people referred to them as, oh, look, these Logos people, because Logos was the title of that composition. And they decided to stay together and uh, perform only 20th century music, and that's how the group started. It was a sort of manifesto with the beginning we started with Logos. Although we started with students of the conservatory, as soon as we came in conflict with the authorities for doing that, we said, well, okay, let's broaden it up. In fact, music is, should belong to everybody. It's a sort of alienation that you have specialists in making music, music professionals. And so we thought, let's open up the group and let's have non-musicians. Uh, we discovered that uh, people are more open towards new made instruments because there is not a rule how to play. They don't know how uh, to handle it. And uh, when they are uh, confronted with traditional instruments, they are always afraid that I don't know how to play that and they will compare me with the ones who can't play it and it will not be good. But when you find a new object, you have to just explore it yourself. And so people are much more enthusiastic and never have that scare of I can't play music when they see that kind of instrument. So that helps them a lot. And that's also one of the reasons that we uh, build a lot of instruments. So we started making these first series of what we call fingerboards, which is just boards with uh, objects to be played with fingers. So not with fists and or with sticks or mallets. So a little collection of objects that you can play this way. <coughs>
been working with computers, and I love these things, because why not? In fact, they make life easier, they open, they widen up uh, your possibilities for expressivity on one condition, though, that you take power on them. And that's, and, and that's a problem, that's philosophically very, very basic. So I, I deny creativity to people that just go to a shop and buy an expensive piece of equipment and think, hey, now I can be creative. I buy a Yamaha DX7 with a little computer to control it. Hey, gosh, now I can pl play. No, because the only thing they can do when they treat technology that way is to repeat what's being built in the machine by the factories. So the, the very first instruments we were making, and that was sort of in the air, were attempts to use electronic things. You know, in, in, in the 60s, that was really the explosion of all the future, where everybody expected everything from electronics, it's particularly because the area of live electronics came up. So the first thing I did was, and I did that myself, was uh, making, designing electronic instruments. Now I, but then there are problems with electronics. Problems from a, an expressive point, from a, relate, a relational point of view. You see, if you have an acoustic instrument, everything that you do with the instrument is related to the effort you put in yeah, it, to the attitude you have. You have if you have, I have a saxophone, I want to make a hard note, and you're like, Arr! whereas if you have an electronic instrument, the same movement to do that is turn a knob. Now, it's, not, not, it's, it's completely irrelevant movement, you know, turning a knob. Up. So <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, and I'm very much against that. I always felt this is being alienating. Right?
and then uh, afterwards came uh, the uh, interest in uh, sound sculptures, where the visual aspect is also important. And this could be or an environment or an automat or a uh, kind of a sound sculpture where the audience could perform themselves during the exhibition. Good. repeats itself you know so it never repeats so it's not it's really a composing a decision process which it decides on on the basis of the previous sounding valves which ones is going to sound next without ever repeating the, the strange thing about it is the fact that it is that i made it as a computer but a computer without using any electronic well strictly speaking electronic parts such as the memory chips and things like that no i tried to make a computer on the basis of only using telephone company release so they can always have memory states, can be on or off. And they can keep information when, they, when you leave them on as magnets or off, this kind of thing. So I made a very small uh, sort of microcomputer but only using mechanical parts. It's where you can actually hear the way it is thinking and programming because you hear the clicking of all the steps and then something comes out. <laughs> instrument there are three big compressors and uh, the wind that is produced by these compressors go through tubes into cushions that are inflatable and then from these inflatable cushions you have again tubes to different instruments and so the audience is invited to come and sit down on the cushions but by doing so they change the air pressure and by changing the air pressure the sounds of the sculptures change themselves too and that's the biggest one that we have uh, made there are for the moment the 20 sculptures of these and they take like a 200 or 300 uh, square meter to do the setup. On the idea behind it is actually that it's the technology of an organ, a traditional church organ, but upside down. We don't play the instrument with any sort of keys, since what we do is we change the air pressure in order to make the pipes, which are all the different instruments, make very different things. We've done performances with an uh, organ and uh, pneumophones together. The and uh, the contrast between the two is great because the organist is sitting very stiff and silent. And he's playing and he hardly moves, just his hands. And then you see the people that are playing the pneumophones rolling and going over and back on these cushions. So this contrast like between the past and the future is uh, <laughs> one of the things we use a lot in our works. Part of the action that we do on the street, uh, the, the, we call it the Singing Bicycle Symphony. And uh, we need at least 12 bicycles and we mount a loudspeaker uh, to the dynamo. So by cycling you produce your own uh, electricity and the loudspeakers start moving and on top of the loudspeakers are tubes in uh, different uh, lengths so that you have the different tones. And uh, the scores in the last bicycle, they all drive one after each other. And the last one overtakes the whole group, so he will have a much higher sound, uh, and the other will make a cluster of very low sounds. And so uh, we always start with a workshop where people are invited to bring their bikes. 
and then we mount these uh, loudspeakers and tubes on the bikes and then we do the uh, symphony through the streets and the nice thing is that people when they uh, hear the bicycles in the street never are uh, thinking of is this art or is this music or they just see these, these instruments and say wow 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 they start and questioning say hey this, what's this uh, and they are, they are involved in the process before they realize the category where it belongs. Since this is a problem, a problem, you mean, you know, how, how come a bike sound like that, you know? And it looks very simple. <laughs> That's something constant through the years of Logos. Although we have a lot of activities in formal concert playing, we organize a lot of formal concerts, small scale, but any scale, but anyway, formal yeah. concerts, always have done this kind of event making in the town, going to the people with things, little villages, doing like singing bicycle or soundtrack projects that nobody really notices, which have a lot of fluxus elements in a certain way, but which are also sort of playful. <laughs> You reach yeah. wide audience, you reach everybody with those things without being exclusive or something. <laughs> At the start we were, we were mo more provocative than we are yeah. now, I think. And there was a lot, of, a serious deal of aggressivity in, our, in the works we have been producing between 68 and let's say 75. Yeah. We saw but that's an evolution, I wouldn't say we became so much softer. <laughs> but it's, the times change also, you can't do that any longer. In, in I realize that people who want to explore things, they will find their way anyway. And that just by offering new things that the people who are interested will find you and will, will start working themselves and being creative. So the idea of really having to struggle against is uh, more into the background now. I think we became more constructive. <laughs>